Uh, well, thanks for inviting me back. Uh, I must admit I am surprised. I spoke to the Royal Conference two years ago and I thought I would never get an invite back, so I am surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was only the Vice Chairman then and Conservative Group Leader, so I was really speaking from a Conservative perspective as, as opposed to kind of the general LGA position. And clearly you back the winner because I have just become chairman of the LGA. And this is my first attempt to go out and talk to people as a cross-party chairman of the LGA. Mm. So I might get it right and I might stray a little bit into the politics and probably get a slap in the office to find out what I've said. They did write me a nice speech. And as you all know, if you know me well, you'll know I won't do anything that it says on the paper. I don't know what I'm on the right. Um, I'll only speak to you for a few minutes. My real point in coming is to find out what it is you want to be telling me so that I can take it back to our members rather than me tell you what our members think that you should be doing. I am going to win you over straight away though by saying my main town isn't parished and I put in my manifesto commitment for this election that we would at least seek the public's opinion on whether it should be or not. So clearly not all property councils are bothering about not having parishes. We honestly see parishes as a solution to some of the problems that are coming. Uh, and that's not that they want to cost a load of stuff to you, but the current government, and particularly the current Secretary of State, is really big on the localism agenda. He kind of personally believes it. It's not a, a fad that he got into once he was elected. It was something he bought with him as he came into Parliament. So the local agenda will be pushed front and centre quite hard now that Greg's there. It really is space he believes in. Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the next year or two we see it compulsory for parish plans to be done and take planning right down to a local local level. And one of the spin-offs from that will be the places where parishes don't exist but neighborhood plans are being done by collectives of people, there will almost certainly be some money and some interest from government to try and push those groups to actually push to become parishes. So there will be a very, very strong push to get as much of the country parish as possible. I think that's definitely one thing that will come. Um, from my own selfish perspective, I think that will be a really good thing because I know I had no money for the last four years, and for the next four years, I'm going to have even less no money. Because, because, because they're, they're, taking, they're going to take the same sort of sum of money off of me, and I've got considerably less than I had when they took it off me last time. So it's going to get really hard, so the budget pressure's going to be really pushed on us. So that will force councils at my level to push services away. But what they shouldn't be doing is pushing them away just to cost shunt, so that you guys get the, the, the expense of doing it. They should be that if we all believe in localism, which most people should do, closer to the people, local to people is cheaper mm. for people. And when we start to aggregate contracts up at, at my level or a county level, you end up building costs into it. Everybody kind of thinks that a bigger contract will be cheaper. It generally isn't because it's not as responsive as people need and the cost of fixing the things that are not responsive become much more expensive. So if you get your ask right, I'm sure you'll be pushing at an open door. And if, like, your colleague earlier who's kind of having trouble persuading people to see that argument. I'm more than happy from an LGA perspective that we kind of pick that up and try through either political group offices or through one of the boards or panels of the LGA to try and push that agenda forward in those places that don't seem to be on the scene. But I honestly think most councils will be open doors for you to push out if that's what you want to do. So the, the key message is about what does the new government offer? Lots of opportunity and no cash. <laughs> that, that's it. I can't go there. Because anybody who tells you that either of those two are not going to happen will be telling you pockets because they definitely will be there. The, the Secretary of State and the team is built around him really believe in it. Brandon's kept the planning brief. Brandon is big on parish plans and neighbourhood plans and anything else that says plan to get done because he's got a task to deliver, deliver a lot of houses. And if they don't get delivered, he's going to be on the naughty step to number 10, which is not a good career move for Brandon because he wants to be going up. So he, so he will want to work as close with you as possible to make sure that the planning agenda gets delivered. Greg will work with you closely on everything because that's just where Greg is. And we'll work with you as close as we can to do stuff where we've got a common interest. And not just for the positive stuff, if, if we've got a common interest in something that's really negative, we'll work with, with Ken and with Justin to make sure that the negative stuff gets done in a way that's less negative than it might otherwise be. They can't always fix it. I know kind of some of my colleagues didn't pass on some money that we didn't get 
which is always a strange thing with government. We've given it to them. No, you haven't. Show me where it is. But, but we, we kind of, most of our members have phased that payment out as opposed to stopping it straight over. A couple did stop it straight over and they were encouraged not to, but they said it's, it doesn't appear in our budget, so it's not going to disappear from our budget. So there, there will be a few. But you need to get used to that. Even if you're getting something over the next few years, you would end up getting nothing. Because there will be a billion quid short out of our budgets by the end of this parliament. And if we're not getting it, we're passing it on to that extent. Pressures are going to be huge. And, and not only have you just kind of got the straightforward budget on our pressures on our main budget, all of the announcements in the budget the other day, before we even see what happens in SDR, is we're going to lose more money. Strange things like the cutting rents by 1%. Sounds like a good idea, otherwise we don't. Great. And then my finance team said, yeah, but look at the business plan for our housing. And I lose over the life of my business plan for my housing, 90 million quid, just on a 1% cut in the rent yield. And I'm a relatively small council. I've only got 4,000 councillors. There are some out there with 12 and 16,000. So they will be taking a big hit on a budget that's already under pressure. So again, kind of getting into housing, if, if you're a big ambitious parish that wants to get into delivering some housing for your people, you can do it. And your councils, district councils, and county councils should help you to be able to do it. And not just to do kind of affordable rent stuff, but doing stuff that's closer to market rent, but where you have control over who's moving in. Because we know that kind of, to build a house is a, the devil's own job. But as soon as you tell somebody it's for their children or their grandchildren to live in, crack on, do it. And if you're dealing with the allocations at parish level, it will be much easier to get people to support having the housing delivered. And you can also generate cash out of it because the cost of a bill and the cost of rental yield, if you're closer to market but not quite at market, does stack up over a 30-year business plan, you'll end up making money. So there are, there are opportunities for the more ambitious ones. And I am going to be a bit negative now when I stop. And you, you kind of heard me say it two years ago that you brought me back, so it must have been OK. <coughs> so I got away with it. You've got to do something about your worst colleagues. The people who really don't get it, who run parish council, really do need to kick up the backside because they drag you all down. It's the same, same as my councils. My, my, we always get judged by the parliamentarians, by our worst colleagues, not by our average or our best colleagues. So we all, there's a kind of duty on us to try and get the worst into the average pack. Because then at least we'll be judged by a much higher standard, even though it's not true, because we should always be judged by the best. But that kind of is ongoing work. And, and I know the LJ is working a bit closer with you guys to do it. But there's still a hell of a lot more that needs to be done. And I, that's where I'm really interested in, is what can we do to make it better for everybody, and the only way we can really make it better is if we get everybody up to that average place, so that we're not all judged by the worst of people that we do. Our only chance of getting power and success out of central government at a local level is if they judge us by the average and not by the worst. So kind of, there is a big ask out of it. And I said this last time I was here, it's kind of easy talking to you. You can't be the worst people, because you are coming out, meeting with other people, finding out what's going on, sorting out where the best practice is and who's doing what that's really interesting. It's the people that are not in this room that you need to get at. And kind of, there are millions of you, but this room hasn't got millions of people in it. So there must be a hell of a lot of people out there that could do with just a nudge or a push or a pull, or be a little bit more aggressive with them. I, I will be aggressive with my parishes, and I am. They, they probably most of them made me. But that's fine. We don't have to send each other Christmas cards and say things. <laughs> but it's not, it's not that I have the rows with them because I don't like them. It's I have rows with them because I'm frustrated. But there's so much more that they could do if only they kind of stepped up to kind of get there. Yeah, there, there was the opportunity for parishes to become quality parish. And don't get me wrong, I kind of don't live with the you've got to jump for all the government suits to be able to get to where you want to be. But that kind of message was look push harder, do better, do more, and get more. And the, 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 the debate around kind of unitarisation that was on the agenda that's gone away again, doesn't mean to say that the role of parishes won't grow, because you would have done, obviously, if we were all moved to unitary parishes, would become higher up the kind of sight line of people, because you would be the only bit that would be close to people. But the stuff around combined authorities is gonna mean power gets devolved down to a group of councils, and there will be an onus on them to devolve it further down, but they're not going to get away with doing that if the people they're going to try and devolve it down to aren't ready to step up. 
So if you think about nothing else today from my perspective, try and think of what can we do, and we can help a little bit, and government obviously can help a lot if they want to, and we can make the case together why they should help more than they are, about how we get everybody up to a decent level so that we can all have confidence in services that are pushed down. Because that's where they need to be. If the country can survive, it can only do it by pushing stuff further down. It will never be done by centralising everything, because we know how much money gets wasted in the town. That's kind of it for me talking at.